I want you to open up your Bibles with me, please, to the book of Psalms 116 and verse 13. Psalm 116 and verse 13. Before we read the scripture, I want to make mention that my, uh, my four-year-old grandson, Gunner, I believe Rachel took the babies to swim. I don't know what it was, Nixa swimming pool or OC or wherever, but anyway, they have a little park in the swimming area that the water's about an inch or two inches deep, and, and Gunner got up and he was walking across that inch deep water, two inch water deep, and he said, hey, I'm like Jesus, I'm walking on the water. <laughs> and never mind, he only had an inch of water under his feet and probably six uh, foot of concrete under that. But anyway, that's the only way that I could walk on water like Jesus, amen. But uh, sure glad the Lord's got us protected. Let's all stand. We'll ask the blessing on, um, let the Lord bless us with the scripture. Verse 13, I will take the cup of salvation and I will call upon the name of the Lord. I want to use for a subject, uh, I'm on the take. You may be seated. I'm on the take. I'm not talking about um, on the tank, on, on taking filthy lucre. I'm not talking about on the take of taking things that isn't proper. But I am very excited about the fact that the Lord's going to return soon. Amen. And because of that, uh, I want to be on the take. I want to take what God has given me. I want to walk in the Spirit of God. Uh, because just ahead... The Lord Jesus Christ is coming soon. I said, just ahead, he's coming. And because just ahead, the return of the Lord is coming, let, us, let me just make a few uh, observations. Just ahead, God's keeping love is there. Just ahead, God's standing grace is there for us. Just ahead, just ahead, the coming of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ is coming soon. Just ahead, it's God Almighty. And just ahead, we are going to be welcomed to our new home in heaven. And because just ahead, we're gonna be facing our God, I wanna be on the take. In that, I wanna take the cup of salvation and I wanna call upon the name of my Lord. This is a time to take what God wants us to take, amen. This is a time to be on the take for God's blessing, on the take for God's leadership, and on the take for God to lead us and guide us and direct us. It's very important that we lay hold of what God has given us. I may mention earlier this week that um, we get wounded in our past, and I may mention that uh, if Jesus Christ doesn't heal the wounds of your past, you will bleed all over your future. And I'm so glad that Jesus Christ comes to heal the wounds of our past. And we can take the cup of salvation and we can call upon the name of the Lord. And so I want you to know that I'm a taker. I'm gonna take all that God wants to give me because just ahead, the Lord is returning. And I wanna gather up all the strength and all the blessings of God that God has to offer because I wanna leave here right with the Lord. I wanna leave here um, uh, blessed and, and strengthened by the power of God. Amen? Amen? Now, so I'm gonna talk to you about I'm on the take. I'm on the take. I, I have taken the cup of salvation. Number two, I have taken hold of God's strength. I'm so glad that God has called and given us opportunity to take hold of his strength. If I couldn't take hold of God's strength, I'd be sunk, I'd be done. It'd be over for me. But I can take hold of God's strength. Because I, I was a sinner and because I was uh, full of iniquity in my heart, I could take hold of the blood of Jesus Christ and take hold of the name of the Son of God. Take hold of eternal life by the blessed name of my Savior and the blessed grace of God. And so uh, we take uh, take hold of the cup of salvation. Take hold of God's strength. Anybody in this room know what it means to take hold of God's strength? I mean, you can sink or you can take hold of God's strength. You can, you can lose your way 
with God or you can take hold of God's strength. You can do without and be powerless and be defeated in life or you can take hold of God's strength. Isaiah chapter 27 verse five says, or let him take hold of my strength. That's what God says. And so we can live a life of defeat or we can take hold of God's strength. We can be depressed and discouraged or we can take hold of God's strength. And I, I, I for one, and I, I believe you're with me on this. Are you with me? Say amen. I'm ready to take hold of God's strength. Amen. Take hold of what God has given me and take hold of what God wants to give me in the future. I mean, oh, God wants to load us up on our way out. Hello? I mean, God wants to give us high octane on our way out of here. Hello? God wants to energize us on our way out of here. When they left Egypt, the children of Israel left Egypt, they left excited, they left healed, they left thrilled, they left blessed, and they left with the mighty hand of power of God. And when I leave here, I want to be the same way, amen, victorious in the blood of the Lamb. And I want to take out of here by the Spirit of God and, and be victorious, amen. I, I don't want to be dragging my feet when Jesus shows up. Hello. I heard a woman say one time in the nursing home, she said, I'm waiting on the Lord with my feet untangled. Hello? And I am, I'm waiting on the Lord with my feet untangled. Meaning that when it's time to go, there's not gonna be a tug behind me, it's all gonna be tugging me upward. Amen? Hello? And so we just thank God for the fact that we can lay hold of God's strength. Not only can we lay hold of God's strength, but I have taken hold of God's covenant. How many know God wants to bless even the Gentile? God wants to bless even the sinner. Uh, Isaiah 56 verse uh, six says, also the son of the stranger. Now it's bad to be a stranger, but to be a son of a stranger, that's even worse. And that's what I was. I wasn't just a stranger, I was the son of a stranger meaning I was alienated from the commonwealth of Israel and I was part, part, uh, apart from the blessing of God. But it says, also the sons of the stranger that joined themselves to the Lord to serve him, to love the name of the Lord, to be his servants, everyone that keepeth the Sabbath from polluting it and taketh hold of my covenant. Hello, I have taken hold of the covenant of the Lord. And I'm not gonna talk about Saturday or Sunday, the, the, the Sabbath. I'm gonna talk about, I have taken hold of the Lord of the Sabbath. I have taken hold of the God of the Sabbath. And I have chosen to set apart God in my life and give him honor every day of my life. I have chosen for Jesus to be my Sabbath every day, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. You say, well, don't you believe in taking one day a week off? I believe in taking seven days a week off. <laughs> yeah. You say, you, anybody out there, anybody there with me? You, you for taking seven days a week? Yeah, I'm, I'm for taking seven days a week off. And if I can't get seven, I'll be okay with six. And if I can't get six, I'll go with five. Amen? I remember there's a time I wish I could just get one day off. But you know, God is given a principle that we are, to, we are to give God place in our life. We, we can't let the things of the world take control of our life and push God out. We have to give God place. And God said, if you'll give me place, if you'll put me first in your life, seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, all these other things will be added unto you. God is saying, if you'll seek me first, I'll bless you. And if you, 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 you covenant with me, and I'm here one, hey, I've taken hold of the covenant of God. Amen? I may be less than a stranger, I may be the son of a stranger, but I've chosen to lay hold of the sovereign, living, almighty God of the universe, and he's made a covenant with me. And the covenant God has made with me is that I will live forever. The covenant that God has made with me, I not only will live forever, but I will live in blessings. Come on, look up here. God wants us to live in blessings on the way home. 
Hello. God doesn't want us to live in cursings. God wants us to live in blessings. Today, I've been living in blessings. Yesterday, I lived in blessings. This week, I'm living in blessings. And the weeks ahead, I'm going to live in blessings. And the, uh, and the months ahead and the years ahead, I'm going to live in blessings. And, and one day, I'm going to be taken home to be with my Lord. And I'm going to live forever in blessings. Come on now. It's so wonderful to know that God saved us. And the Bible says that don't pollute the Sabbath. And I realized that the Jewish Sabbath, they would take one day a week, which was Saturday, the Jewish Sabbath, and they were not to work, and they were to honor the Lord, and they would spend their time in meditation to God. But I want you to know right now, the world is polluting their days seven days a week. The world is polluting their, their way with God. In fact, the world, when I speak of the world, I'm speaking of lost people. They don't have no reverence for God at all. And the world is polluted. If you want your world unpolluted, turn to Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Come on now. I don't like living in a house that's polluted. I don't like having a life that's polluted. I don't want to drink out of polluted river. I don't want to drink out of polluted fountain. I don't want to drink from a polluted glass of water. I don't want to be involved with any pollution in my life. Amen. And so if I want that kind of life, I've got to not pollute my relationship with Jesus Christ. I've got to make sure that my walk with God is not polluted. Polluted with what? Polluted with the world. Polluted with what? Polluted with fear and unbelief. Polluted with what? Uh, polluted with sin and iniquity and strife. And he says, and, and take it hold of my covenant. I love it, amen? Take it hold of my covenant. That brings me to another covenant that Jesus made, and it's called the New Testament covenant. I've taken the body of Jesus, and I've taken the blood and the body of Jesus Christ as my covenant. How many in this room taken the body of, of Jesus and the blood of Jesus as your covenant? I have. Matthew 26, verse 26, down to verse 28 says, and as they were eating, Jesus took bread. That was the night of his betrayal before he went to the cross that early that next morning. And he blessed that, that bread. And he broke it and gave to his disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body. And he took the cup and gave thanks and gave it to them saying, uh, Drink ye all of it, for this is my blood of the New Testament. That's a new covenant which is shed for many for the remission of sins. I'm glad that the New Testament is my covenant that God has made a covenant with me and because of his broken body and because uh, of that broken body of the Son of God, Jesus Christ, and because of the blood that was shed upon Cal Golgotha's hill there at Calvary on the cross, because of that, God has made a covenant with you and I through the blood of Jesus Christ and through the broken body of Jesus Christ. God has made a covenant with us. Why? Because if we'll believe in Jesus, trust Jesus, look to Jesus, honor Jesus, respect Jesus, uh, uh, serve Jesus, look to Jesus, and completely sell out our heart to Jesus Christ, God made a covenant with you that whosoever believeth on the Son shall have everlasting life. That's the covenant God made. The covenant made that nothing, that we shall never perish because we've taken of the covenant. I've taken of the body of Jesus Christ. He said, how do you take of the body of Jesus Christ? I believe what he did on Golgotha's hill was real. I believe that what they did to him on, uh, on that uh, Gabbatha, that, that, that p place called the pavement, and they beat him with a, a cat on nine tail. I believe that. I believe that they spit in his face, uh, those Roman soldiers. I believe that they beat him in the head with a, with a rod, I believe, with a reed. I believe they pulled out his beard and caused blood to gush from his cheekbones. I, I believe that they spit in his face and the spittle run down his face. I believe they slapped him and ridiculed him and stripped him of his garments and I believe uh, ripping him apart with that, with that whip as 
they whip it across his body. And I believe they took him out to Golgotha's hill and laid an old heavy cross upon his back. And I believe they took nails and drove them in his hands and, and in his feet. And, and they hung him between heaven and earth. And there hanging between the hot sun and the, and the filthy planet earth, Jesus Christ, a ransom and a forgiveness for our sin. I believe that the body of Jesus Christ was broken so that you and I can go to heaven. I believe that. I believe the blood that came out of the body of Jesus was not just Jesus, man's blood, but it was God's blood. I believe the blood that pulsated with every heartbeat, the blood oozed and squirted from his body. Every heart, every heartbeat of the chest cavity of the Son of God, the blood oozed out of the nail prints and oozed out of his pierced back and a beaten body. And every heartbeat, the blood pulsates out. I believe that every time his heart beat and the blood Blood oozed out of his body on the cross of Calvary. God was saying, I love you and I've given you this for the remission of your sin. And that blood was shed. And that's a covenant and I take that covenant. I take the cup of salvation. I'm a taker. I'm on the take. I don't mean I'm on the take for filthy lucre. I don't mean I'm on the take for wealth and things of the earth, but I'm on the take. I want, I, I want to lay hold of everything God is offering me. I take hold of the cup of salvation. I take hold of his mercy and the covenant that he's made with you and I through the shed blood of Jesus Christ. I'm a, I, I, I want to take the blessings of the Lord. And I want to take the strength that God gives me every day. I want to take strength from God. When, it feel, when I feel like I can't make another step, I want to take strength from God. When I feel so unworthy, I want to take strength from God. When I feel so down and so defeated and so uh, much dis despair in my life, I want to take strength from God. Sometimes I get up in the morning and I just say, God, I need your strength. Uh, and I just call out, God, give me some strength. Uh, give me some strength. Uh, and, and sometimes the pressure gets hard. But I just, I say, I can cave into it or I can take hold of God's strength. I can falter or I can take hold of God's strength. The storm comes and I can, and I can find myself sinking in despair or I can take hold of God's strength. And I want you to know, I'm a taker. I'm going to take hold of God's strength. I'm on the take of the blessing of God. Because I know just ahead. Just ahead, Jesus Christ is coming. Just ahead, Jesus is coming. I've taken the words. I've taken words to Jesus Christ. I've taken words to God. What is prayer? Prayer is taking words to God. You say, well, that, you, is that in the Bible? Yes, it's in the Bible. Hosea 14, verse 2. We take words to God. Verse two of Hosea 14, take with you words and return to the Lord. Take with you words and turn to the Lord. Say unto him, God even tells us what to say. Hello? I mean, we're so messed up, God has to tell us what to say. Hello? I mean, you don't have to go to the altar and twiddle your thumbs, I don't know what to say. He tells us what to say. He said, take with you words and turn to the Lord. Say to him. Now, see, he's telling you what to say. Take away all iniquity. Take away my sin. And receive us graciously. Receive me, Lord, graciously. So will we render the calves, and that calf means the fruit of our lips. We will render the sacrifices of our lips. What can we give God? I mean, if we had a billion dollars, you think God needs it? You think they got a poverty program going on in heaven? No. Hello? The thing men die for, gold, God makes it streets out of it. Amen. And so God says, you, the only thing that you can really bring to me is your words. Hello? What am I saying? It's not what I'm saying. It's what Hosea, the prophet, said in chapter 14, verse 2. He's saying, you need to talk to God. You need to talk to God. 
You're going through a hard time tonight, you need to talk to God. Life's not going well for you, you need to talk to God. Are you away from God? Are you backslid a little bit tonight? You need to talk to God. If you're lost in your sin, you need to talk to God. If you backslid in your life, you need to talk to God. Take with you words. Turn to the Lord and say unto him, forgive me. Say unto him, take away my iniquity. Receive us graciously so we will render our praise, render our fruit, render our sacrifices of our lips to thee. You know, I, I don't know of anything more encouraging than God telling all of us poor, miserable, afflicted human beings, you can just come to me. You can just come to me and bring words. Hello? Say, it's not so much what you can give God. God's the one that sits on the throne. We just come to the throne and he stretched a scepter toward us. And Jesus, and Jesus is that scepter of God. And we enter into the holy room of God and, and God just stretches forth his scepter, his son Jesus. And God says, speak. You're at liberty to speak. Hello. We're at liberty to pray. And we go before God and we bring to him words. I don't know about you, but I, I can do that. I can bring words to God. I mean, in this room can bring words to God. I can bring words to God. Don't take a theologian to be able to do that. Uh, we can take words to God. And taking words to God can change your life. Hello, just taking words to God can change your life. And that's what he's saying to the people of Israel there in the book of Hosea. Just take words to me. And so I'm a taker. I'm taking words to Jesus. I'm going to take words to God until the day I leave this planet. I'm going to take words to God. I'm going to take the blessings of God. I'm going to take the, the, the things that God has promised me. I'm going to take words to God. And I'm going to say, thank you, Jesus. And I'm going to love him. And I'm going to ask him for things. And I'm going to ask him for strength. I'm going to take words to God. Amen. That's so simple but yet it's so profound. We can take words to God. And those words can literally change our life. You say, well, what if your words are not truthful? Well, that says it plainly, right? Hello? I mean, you speak from your heart, you're gonna get answers, amen? Hello? Praise God. Take words to God. Come to the last one. I've taken God's yoke upon me. You say, well, preacher, what is a yoke? A yoke is where you put two dumb animals together to pull a load. Only in this case, one of those is not an animal. His name is the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, the most omniscient, wisest human being that ever lived, our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. So I just hook up like a dumb animal to Jesus Christ, take his yoke upon me, and Jesus helps me pull the load. Amen? And, and, and I hooked up to Jesus. I put Jesus' yoke upon me. And Jesus, majestic Son of God, holy Son of God, all wise, immutable, invisible, almighty God, sovereign God of the universe. And God says, put your yoke upon, take my yoke upon you and, and just learn of me. And, and we can pull a load together. Two animals get together with a yoke and they can pull a heavy load. And I hooked up to Jesus Christ I said I hooked up with Jesus Christ in 1978. I stuck my head, my heart, my life, my brain into the yoke of Jesus Christ and Jesus Christ looked over at me and said, you need a bath. And I got one. Hello. And Jesus Christ said, I'm not gonna walk around with someone stupid. We're gonna give you the mind of Christ. Hello, if you think a dumb animal is going to hook up with Jesus Christ and Jesus Christ is going to put up with that, no, he's going to change you. And he changed me. Come on, I'm, I'm preaching better than you're responding. And you get that yoke on. And that yoke is where two animals, and of course Jesus Christ, the Son of God, and you and I hook up with him 
And Jesus said, take my yoke upon you and learn of me. And then you'll learn of me. The Bible says you'll find rest for your soul. Let me read this scripture to you. Matthew 11, verse 29 and 30. Take my yoke upon you, learn of me. For I am meek and lowly in heart, and you shall find rest for your soul. For my yoke is easy, and my burden is light. The yoke is to help us pull the loads of life. Hello. Jesus Christ didn't say, you get saved and I'll do everything for you. Jesus Christ didn't say, come to me and be born again and then sit in, sit in a pew somewhere, or a church a seat somewhere and just let me do it all. That's not why Jesus Christ said, we're working together here. Hello. Otherwise, you're gonna have to take your, up your end of the piano. Excuse me, the old timer's piano or piano. Amen. I just hate it. I remember one time I was moving the piano. I said, not, not a big deal. I'm, I'm about 17 years old. I think I can pick up the world. And they're going to move a piano. And it wasn't one like the grand piano here. It was a old high top made out of steel. At least it felt like it was made out of steel. And, and I said, we'll carry that. And so about four of us got together and we decided we needed another one. What did you need the fifth one for? To cushion it when it hit the ground between him and that person. And, and you know what that person had? The, we, we got it in the living room. We have got it through the door, got it in the living room. And the person said to us, it goes upstairs. How many know that the four of us said, we're going to put it downstairs. And if you want it upstairs, you're going to have to find some people more ignorant than we are. And we put it downstairs. But let me say this quickly, and I, and I said all this to say that you're going to come across things in life too heavy for you to carry. You're going to come, th uh, come across things in life too hard for you to bear. There's going to be loads too heavy for you to carry. There's going to be uh, things too hard for you, you to endure. And Jesus knew that. And so Jesus said, take my yoke upon you. Learn of me. Take my yoke. I'm, I, my burden's light. Uh, uh, I'll give you rest. I'll give you strength. Just take my yoke upon you and I'll help you pull the load. You see, his burden is light. Our burden is heavy. Anvil heavy. Anybody know what an anvil is? Oh, yeah. Hello? Hello? Guys break into a garage and they're going to steal the stuff out of the garage. The one thing they don't steal is the anvil. Too heavy to carry. But Jesus Christ helps us and, he, and we pull the load. And I'm glad Jesus helps me pull the load. And, and because he helps me pull the load, it's my job. I've got to get inside the yoke and I've got to pull my part. I've got to do my part. And Jesus Christ is so muscled up and so powerful and so strong that I think, man, I'm superhuman. I think, man, I've got it together. I'm not superhuman. I'm supernatural with Jesus Christ. I'm natural without him. Hello. But life can be hard. Life can be tough. But so many times we want it easy. Hello. I shared this story once before, but I gotta share it again because I've been looking at my taters in the garden and they are getting somewhat of a tsunami in this rain. I'm thinking, are them taters gonna make it? And I remember about the, the tater transport guy, the tater farmers, and they were getting together and they were taking their taters to market. And, this, the, and they would go to market and they wouldn't get much out of their taters. But this one guy, Every time he would get the highest buy of his tater, he'd get the best market of all. And the farmers asked, how do you do that? How do you get such a good deal, uh, a good uh, payback on your taters? And he said, well, you guys, when you get your truck filled up, you just hit the interstate and you just go the smooth roads and you just make your way to the tater place and they buy your taters. So by the time you get there, um, you just got a bunch of 
little taters on top of your truck. But he said, when I go, I go the back way. And I go through the rough roads. And I hit the puddle, boom, 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 boom. And I shake it around. And I go the rough road, and I mean, I go there and my truck. And when I get to market, all the big taters are on top, and all the little taters are on bottom. And I'm looking at some folks that are little taters. But learn to hook up with Jesus. Take the, don't take the easy road. Take the road that God's called you to take. And it doesn't matter. Let the shaking begin. Let the hard time begin. Because you can be a big tater and not a little tater. And I've chose to be a big tater. Amen. Come on now. What are you saying, preacher? I'm saying some of you are little spuds. <laughs> Amen? Some are big taters, and then there's some sweet taters out there, too. Sweet taters. I'm not a, you know, I don't really, you know, there's something about a potato tasting sweet. That's kind of like, you know, getting pizza with, with, with the pineapple on it. And pizza don't, Pineapple don't belong on pizza. It's kind of like getting a, 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 a ham and putting pineapple on the ham. And you're thinking, if God wanted ham on pineapple on ham, he'd have put one of them pineapple necklaces around the pig when it's born. Hello? You say, what are you saying, preacher? I'm saying if you like your meat sweet, there's trouble with you. I like my meat to taste like meat, not fruit. Amen. And I see I'm preaching better than you're responding again. You're sitting there like spuds. Sitting there like little taters. But I got some sweet taters the other day, and they said, you want it loaded? And I said, load it up. And I'm thinking when they bring this sweet tater out to me, loaded up, I'm thinking there's going to be butter, and there's going to be sour cream, and there's going to be onions, and there's going to be chives. They brought it out to me and there was cinnamon and there was sugar and there was brown sugar and there was marshmallows. And I'm thinking, that don't belong on a tater. Now my wife likes them that way. But you know, I, a sweet tater, I just like to eat a sweet tater. I, I, they're good just like they are. Just a little butter and salt and go for it, amen. Hello? You say, what are you doing, preacher? I'm giving you some taterology right now. <laughs> you needed some tater taterology. But let me say this real quickly. God wants to bless us. I said, God wants to bless us. And we need to learn to take what God's given us. We need to learn to take the yoke of God upon us and learn to pull our end of the deal. Because just ahead, it's God's keeping love. Yeah, just ahead there's some storms, just ahead there's some trials, just ahead there's some hard times ahead, but just ahead there's God's keeping love. I wanna say just ahead there's God's standing grace. No matter what we face in this life, just ahead is God's standing grace. Just ahead is the coming of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Just ahead is God Almighty. And just ahead is our welcome home. Let me read this to you real quick out of De Deuteronomy 28, verse 6. Blessed, how many want to be blessed? Deuteronomy 28, verse 6. Blessed shalt thou be when thou comest in, and blessed shalt thou be when thou goest out. Blessed in, blessed out. Blessed out, blessed in. How many would like that kind of life? Blessed in, blessed out. Verse 3 of the same chapter, Deuteronomy 28, says, Blessed shalt thou be in the city, and blessed shalt thou be in the field. Verse 4 says, Blessed shall be the fruit of thy body, and the fruit of thy ground, and the fruit of thy cattle, and increased of thy kind, of meaning their babies, and the flock of thy sheep. Verse 5, Blessed shall be thy basket in thy store. Hello? 
I remember when I first, Judy and I first got married, and Judy and I first, uh, we were on a budget. It wasn't. It was hard for us to make. Anybody know what we're talking? Hard. Is everybody in this room rich? I mean, when I just started, Judy and I, we were on a budget, and we'd have to write everything down on a piece of paper what we were going to buy. Because if we didn't put it on the piece of paper, then we would go into the store and we'd say, oh, that looks good. Oh, that looks good. So we got a budget going. If it wasn't on the budget, you didn't get it. Amen. And I, you know, I wasn't very wealthy, Judy and I, and I worked hard, Judy worked hard, but I can't tell you how many times I had to eat chicken liver. The little tubs, about 30, Five cents a tub for chicken liver, make a meal of 35 cents worth of chicken liver. Now, you got kids now, wouldn't eat that. Duh. Amen? Come on. You know, uh, I mean, you can take, you can take Ward to a fanciest restaurant where they got hors d'oeuvres and all, and he'll order chicken liver and onions or beef liver and onions. But I used to see people drive their cart by, and they just round it up. And I'd look at that and say, Judy, look. And their, their cart would be just, just heaped over. And they'd pull up to the cash register and they'd buy their groceries. And back then, this was years ago, back then they'd spend, a, they'd spend 50 bucks on groceries. Me and Judy's budget was $10 a week on groceries. Ten dollars. They spend fifty bucks. Now that would cost three hundred bucks, right? And I used to think, man, I wish I could do that. Just walk into the store, don't look at the price, and just throw it in the deal. Amen. That's what he means there. Blessed is thy basket in the store. God will bless. Blessed shall be thy basket in thy store. I love that. It climaxes with verse 2. It says, All these blessings shall come on thee and overtake thee if thou shalt hearken unto the voice of the Lord thy God. He said, All these blessings will come upon you and will run you down, will overtake you if you will hearken to the voice of the Lord. Amen? It's just like when you hearken to the voice of the Lord and you love God and you obey God and you're sitting over there in the corner and, and God says to Gabriel, watch this, I'm gonna tackle him with blessings. Amen? Just like you're, just like you're trying to get by and, 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 and a, 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 a whole uh, football team of Angels just whoom, take you down and, and roll you in, in cotton candy prosperity. Amen. Blesses you. Hello? Now, don't get to uh, miss uh, interpretation that I think that you can bri buy or bribe God. But I do know that if you obey God, God will bless you. Amen. I do know that if you'll obey God, if you'll pay the tithe, if you give what you should to the Lord, if you'll hear the voice of God, God will bless you. I know that for a fact. God will bless you. Amen? I remember when I first got saved, I had a real problem with this tithing business. I mean, I had a problem with tithing when I first got saved. Because I couldn't understand how can you give and get. You know, how'd that work? I went, went to church and listened to a preacher, lie, 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 give in the... It'll be given unto you. And, I, and I'm thinking, you know, I can't do that. And I got to thinking one day, I said, well, Lord, I'll just start giving and see what happens. I started giving and God just started shoveling in. He started blessing me. Now, should I do it to get a blessing? No. But we should do it because we're excited about the work of God. Amen. We need to be obedient to the Lord. I never will forget one time the Lord spoke to me. I was mowing the yard and the Lord spoke to me. Go down there and witness the the neighbor down there. He said, go witness to him. And I said, I'll do that after a while. And the Lord said, go down there and witness to the neighbor and tell the neighbor about Jesus. I said, now, Lord, I've got a little bit of mowing to do. I'll get to it later. 
And the Lord speaks to me the third time and said, I'm telling you, go tell them about Jesus Christ. I've got them ready. They're ready to listen. Go. And I said, Lord, I can't do that. About that time, my lawnmower picked up a rock and shone right through the picture window of my house. And the Lord said, what'd you say? And I said, I'm headed that way right now. Hello? And Judy said, you should have listened. We wouldn't have had to buy another window. I've, had, I've heard it said, and I don't know if this, how much truth is in it, but I've heard you'll tithe one way or another. You'll either do it to the church or you'll give it to doctors and, and problems and, and difficulties, and it's going to happen either way. And I'm not here preaching money, but I am telling you, if you'll hear the voice of God and listen to God, God will bless you. You got to get on board with God, amen? Stand with me. Get on board with God. Hello? Amen. Say, preacher, you preached about four or five minutes overtime. Yep, I'm getting you ready for next Wednesday. We'll have a big cookout, a good time, celebrating the blessings of the Lord. But I want to say to you right now just ahead, Jesus is coming. Just ahead, Jesus Christ is going to return to heaven, to earth with a shout from heaven. Just ahead, God's grace and mercy will be just permeating our lives. And we'll be blessed. We'll be blessed going in and going out. Blessed going in and going out. Because we hearken unto the voice of the Lord. Josh is going to play and sing. You come tonight. And just obey the voice of the Lord. I will bless thee.